good day to one and all in our previous session we were discussing on a small topic s block elements in general and in particular we were discussing on the softness of s block metals after discussing or after understanding what do you mean by s block elements and trends in physical properties today we start trends in chemical properties so with this note i welcome you all for today's session on chemical properties of alkali metals and their trends okay once again i am reminding you we are discussing general trends not particular trends okay wherever particular properties arises at that time i will highlight otherwise you take it as a general trend okay right reactivity towards air alkali metals as usual when they react with oxygen they give oxides but here they form three different types of oxides one is normal oxide other one is peroxide and the last one is superoxide so oxide means what they have this ion for example sodium oxide so sodium is plus 1 oxide is minus 2 so sodium oxide form is what na2o okay right now if they form peroxide then they will have this ion peroxide ion is o2 2 minus normal oxide is o2 minus peroxide is o2 2 minus when sodium forms peroxide its formula is what na is 1 plus as usual but peroxide ion is o2 2 minus okay so that 2 minus will come to na and na is 1 plus will come here the formula becomes na2 o2 okay so na2 o is a sodium oxide Na2O2 is sodium peroxide. Okay, so peroxide ion is slightly bigger than the oxide ion. In the same way, they also form superoxide, where the ion uh, the formula is O2 minus O2 minus. Okay, right. So, but the trend is when you move from top to bottom, formation of superoxide is more. You see here, in the beginning they form only oxide. as you move from top to bottom they start giving not only oxide their their dominance is towards the peroxide then if you come down towards the superoxide it is because of what it is because of the size okay as the size is increasing so the size of the superoxide matches with the uh, bigger size therefore they prefer to form uh, superoxide uh, at the bottom it is because of the size which matches okay then they go for the correct lattice structure okay so all matters what uh, once they go for attraction then they uh, they go for the close packing in the three dimension then they go for the crystal lattice so it is because of all these reasons preference of forming superoxide is at the bottom okay so larger size will prefer superoxide moderate size will prefer uh, peroxide come superoxide or peroxide come the oxide they are in between whereas in the beginning smaller size they prefer oxides only now reaction with water water when alkali metals gives oxides with oxygen with water they form hydroxides alkali metals are the most reactive metals on the modern periodic table that we have seen already in the chapter 3 and just now uh, before this session so therefore they react vigorously so alkali metals reacts fastly violently vigorously with water and they give respect to hydroxides along with liberation of hydrogen gas okay so hydrogen gas liberation is checked by bringing the burning matchstick which burns with pop sound all these are chemical reactions and the chemical equations property number 3 or the trend number 3 they form hydrides with hydrogen okay all alkali metals immediately they react with hydrogen gas and forms respect to or the corresponding hydrides this is the general equation whereas this is the particular equation sodium with hydrogen sodium hydride and these hydrides are very reactive they are called as storehouse of hydrogen or they are called bank of hydrogen whenever you have hydrogen these are either made to react with water or they are decomposed so that 
hydrogen gas comes out that you can use it for variety purposes hydrogen is very difficult to store okay i told in the previous class under the chapter hydrogen economy so but hydrogen can be stored in the form of hydride so alkali metals being the most reactive metals they immediately react with hydrogen and becomes uh, corresponding hydrides they, they are solids so they are stored around say in the bottles or the containers and whenever you want hydrogen you just take them made them to react with water or decompose get the hydrogen okay how you we keep money in the bank whenever you want go to the bank and get the money in the same way store the hydrogen in the form of hydride and get the hydrogen when you want now this is reactivity of uh, alkali metals with halogen the best bond on the modern periodic table extreme left with extreme right okay extreme left most reactive easy donor of electrons whereas extreme right they are also most reactive on what round on electron accepting nature okay so alkali metals they are the best electron donors and halogens are the best electron acceptor when the best electron donor best electron acceptor they come in contact with each other they form the best bond uh, where electron transfers from the extreme left to the extreme right and ionic bond is formed and the compounds are called ionic compounds or electron compounds and these are between alkali metals and the halogen and the two among the alkali metals and halogen the best bond is left bottom francium and the right top fluorine okay so francium fluoride is the best ionic bond on the modern periodic table because francium is the radioactive therefore it is not considered uh, its chemistry so the best ionic bond as of now is cesium fluoride okay right now alkali metals largest size okay best electron donor the one which gives electron easily they are the best reducing agents that means what is the conclusion alkali metals are the best reducing agents solutions in liquid ammonia the alkali metals dissolve in liquid ammonia giving deep blue solutions which are conducting in nature so whenever alkali metals are kept in the liquid ammonia so uh, they give out the electron to the ammonia and they convert into ammoniated electrons okay that is shown in general equation because particular equation is not there for you we study the higher class because there is a chapter in the higher class known as reactions in liquid ammonia so only in the higher class like uh, pc or the introduction part in the graduation you will learn but now time being whenever alkali metals reacts with ammonia they form deep blue color it is because of what free electrons which are uh, moving uh, whenever they absorb certain amount of energy and that falls in the visible area of the spectrum that all we have learnt so deep blue color is because of what free electrons the blue color of the solution is due to the ammoniated electron which absorbs energy in the visible region of light okay the solutions are paramagnetic why paramagnetic when the electrons are unpaired single mobile they are called they, that is that magnetic property is called paramagnetism whereas if the electrons are paired not free then they are called as diamagnetic but here electrons are free they are ammoniated electrons therefore they are paramagnetic in nature and on standing slowly liberate hydrogen resulting in the formation of amide so after giving hydrogen they convert into what amide this is the amide formation okay equation in concentrated solution the blue color changes to bronze color and becomes diamagnetic that means when the uh, concentration of the uh, water uh, alkali metals in liquid ammonia increases it is strong that time so they uh, go for arrangement of the paired electron so when they go for pairing they show diamagnetic property and the color changes from one to other here it is from uh, blue to the bronze it is all because of pairing and pairing of electrons okay right now we will go to the uses of alkali metals list is very big some uh, uses we will learn in that mainly lithium battery nowadays we have seen in mobiles okay so or in the clock so lithium we will find maximum in making the battery because i told lithium uh, 
uh, alkali metals are the best reducing agents in that lithium is the strongest reducing agent it is because of the small size uh, whose hydration enthalpy is more so whenever lithium comes in contact with the water so its hydration enthalpy increases that is the reason for knocking out electron from lithium though it is small size see when you move from top to bottom in the alkali metals electron giving becomes more at the bottom but uh, in this in the case of lithium that in water this condition holds good when lithium comes in contact with water water okay otherwise in general the best electron donor is at the bottom but when they are with water the best electron uh, giver is water it is a lithium first member it is because of water it's a small size i told it can polarize water easily so water can react easily with the uh, lithium ion and thereby enormous amount of energy is given out that is hydration enthalpy that hydration enthalpy is the reason for taking out the electron from the small lithium structure okay so the reason is exclusively because of the highest hydration enthalpy in the lithium and uh, uh, cesium atomic clock is used for most accurate time measurement okay they are called as a uh, quartz clock or cesium clocks in or cesium in the photoelectric effect uh, so all these are use of about alkali metals lithium is widely used in rechargeable batteries in cell phones laptops uh, pacemaker all those nowadays digital technology depends upon the lithium batteries okay lithium along with other members right now general uh, behavior halides of alkali metals lithium chloride lithium fluoride sodium chloride sodium fluoride all these are called halides of alkali metals the alkali metals combine directly with halogen and forms halides of alkali metals okay and these halides can also be prepared by the action of aqueous halogen acids on metal oxides or metal hydroxides or metal carbonate either you can prepare halide direct combination of alkali metals with halogen or by using the metal oxide alkali metal oxide or the alkali metal hydroxides or their carbonates with what halogen acids what are halogen acids halogen with uh hydrogen okay hcl hbr hi hf all these are called halogen acids in general they are called hx okay x is any halogen okay here is the x stands for either fluorine chlorine bromine or the iodine but not the acetyl here also acetyl is the water member radioactive so chemistry is not developed we don't take it so with uh, oxide uh, hydrogen halide this is the uh, water alkali metal halide alkali metal halide alkali metal halide okay general equations okay right now see alkali metal halides are colorless high melting crystalline solids having high negative enthalpies of formation because they are most reactive alkali metals are most reactive and halogens are most reactive when the most reactive most energetic ions will combine energy is given out okay so that's why they have the higher uh, negative enthalpies of formation when they form energy is given out that is called enthalpy of formation okay right why they have high because they are highly energetic when energetic will combine they become normal they become stable energy is given out and you see the order fluorides have got what large negative enthalpy formation compared to chlorides bromides and the iodide because fluorine is the most reactive most energetic therefore enormous amount of energy is given out whenever alkali metals come on with fluorine the thus fluorides are the most stable while iodides are the least stable because enormous amount of energy is given out in the case of fluorides uh, same energy is required to break also that means more amount of energy is required to break the fluorides that indicates fluorides are most stable the trends in melting points boiling points and solubility of alkali metals halides can be understood in terms of polarization effects lattice energy and the hydration of ions so there are three reasons to understand the uh, trends in the melting point the what are those trend uh, the reason one is polarizing power polarizing power of the alkali metal ions on uh, ions of the halogens and their lattice energy how much close they can uh, uh, pack and uh, when they react with water how much energy is given out and uh, how, how, how whether with easily electron is given out or with difficulty electron is given out so all these factors it is a combined effect of the these, these three reasons that will matter 
to explain the property of the uh, alkyl metal halides now oxo acids oxo acids is what acids in this structure they should contain at least one oh group this is one condition and second condition is from that oh h can be removed easily if these two conditions satisfies they are called as oxo acids okay best example is sulfuric acid h2 s o4 okay so the here they contain two oh groups okay and from this area h is given out okay so this is the these two h are replaceable h so acidic properties are due to these hydrogens okay so condition number 1 they should contain minimum one oh group in the structure and from that oh h can be removed easily that is the reason for the acidic behavior and they are called as oxo acid why they are oxo acid it is the hydrogen which is associated with the oxygen that is given out okay acidic property because of this hydrogen and that hydrogen is with having connection with this o okay so that's why they are called what oxo acid so sulfuric acid is oxo acid in the same way nitric acid chloric acid carbonic acid phosphoric acid all these are oxo acids they contain oxo anion okay so you know three all these are after giving the hydrogen they become oxo anion okay right so and when these oxo acids react with bases of alkyl metals they form respective salts okay right now salts of oxo acids what do you mean by salts of oxo acids when the oxo acids okay these oxo acids okay these oxo acids when they react with the bases of uh, alkyl metals they are called whenever acid plus base reacts with water we get a salt and water so salts of oxo acids means oxo acids on reacting with the bases of this family whatever salt is formed they are called as salts of oxo acid best example is sodium sulfate sodium sulfate is formed from the oxo acid sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide so sodium sulfate is the best example for salt of oxo acid sulfuric acid now just now uh, we studied that the first member behaves differently why it behaves differently let us understand so we are discussing what anomalous behavior different behavior of lithium lithium not only behaves like alkyl metals it also behaves like uh, the neighboring member uh, with alkaline earth metals why let us see here lithium is the hardest of all the alkyl metals general trend is what alkyl metals are soft but lithium is different it is slightly hard i am not saying it is hardest like diamond comparatively if you compare the hardness of lithium with other members of the alkyl metals lithium is slightly hard that means it is showing slightly different behavior than its own members the melting point and the boiling points of lithium are much higher because it is slightly harder lithium is less reactive as compared to other metals and it does not get a tarnished readily in air so compared to other members it is not so reactive because uh, it is slightly covalent in nature okay so when it is covalent in nature less reactive then it is not tarnished what is tarnish the when when the active metals react with the atmosphere they become oxide so that oxide layer will uh, will cover the uh, oxide structure that uh, metal structure so then the next metal will not react okay it is called as a protective cover so when the when the upper layer reacts with the atmosphere becomes the either nitride or the uh, oxide so then that uh, shining uh, we, we, Will decrease that normally metals are what metals are so uh, they they have lustrous property they shine so when they react with uh, oxygen so uh, oxide layer is formed so they lose the shining proper shining property if you want to see the shining property you cut the upper surface or using sandpaper remove the outer cover one scene you get the shining uh, metallic uh, layer of lithium or any other alkali metals okay so shining property is uh, you don't see in the upper part of the uh, layer okay of the metal structure but in the case of lithium uh, because it is not so reactive it will not react so fastly with the oxygen that means it will not tarnish okay uh. lithium is a liquid means it absorbs water molecules why 
its hydration enthalpy is highest okay right lithium bicarbonate is not obtained in the solid form you may get in the either liquid form or gaseous form but not as solid why because it will not go for the close packing lithium with a bigger bicarbonate structure what is bicarbonate bicarbonate is hco3 minus which is very bigger in size so bigger in size will not match with a small lithium uh, cation therefore lithium bicarbonate is will not go for the close packing it may go for the either loose packing or the very loose packing or that means it occurs as in the liquid occur as liquid or as gas not as solid now please once again compare it nature of compound lithium other alkali metals ionic but lithium is covalent other alkali metals are low melting point boiling point whereas it's very high tendency of hydration hydration enthalpy okay other metals low but lithium high delicacy lithium attracts okay but other no now solubility lithium is soluble in organic compound whereas other 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 members are easily soluble in the water that means this table will tell lithium behaves different than other members okay why here are the four reasons reason number 1 lithium is extremely small lithium 1 plus ion okay extremely small so it can polarize the opponent uh, opposing anion so it will show certain different properties and lithium is least electropositive that means it is having electronegative character also because it is having electronegative character it can go for the covalent bond okay now in the lithium uh, we don't find any d orbitals so d orbitals start from the other members so sodium here 3s1 is there so 3p is khali 3d is there it is khali but it is there no but in the case of lithium three, d orbital is not all there so when the d orbital is not there okay then it can it cannot expand its uh, uh, reacting or its uh, uh, valency beyond a uh, uh, certain limit so because it is restricted to certain valency so it is different because once again, once again i am reminding you d orbitals are not there in the lithium whereas d orbitals starts from the other members therefore they can expand their uh, covalency or electrovalency but lithium cannot expand it is restricted to uh, some limitations okay that's why all these are reasons for what uh, different behavior anomalous behavior of lithium with other members now lithium bios not only with other members i told it's a diagonal member so lithium diagonal member is what magnesium okay ha huh. lithium magnesium both are hard metals due to the presence of strong metallic bond lithium magnesium both are hard therefore their melting point boiling point are high compared to other members that means here what we discussing we are discussing lithium differs from the other members of the alkali metals then it will show similarity with whom with the next member magnesium which is there in the alkaline earth metals family so if you move from left to right and top to bottom result and diagonal if you it is similar okay ha that is the reason lithium hydroxide magnesium hydroxide are both weak bases lithium chloride and magnesium chloride are insoluble in the water they are covalent in nature but soluble in the organic solvents lithium chloride and magnesium chloride get hydrolyzed due to their covalent nature lithium and magnesium directly combine with o2 to form normal oxides but other members form peroxide and the superoxide or oh, normal oxide is formation is there only with the lithium okay right you see whenever we we move from left to right and top to bottom so these these two properties will combine even you move from diagonally okay so you see lithium size it is 152 picometer whereas magnesium is 160 picometer very close i am not saying exactly uh, uh, same very close atomic size and you see when lithium gives one electron when magnesium gives two electron when they, when in any condition what is the size lithium 1 plus size is 76 picometer whereas magnesium 2 plus any size 72 picometer very close so because of close size some similar properties are expected between lithium and the magnesium okay so similar polarizing power similar electropositivity similar atomic radii lithium will show some similar property with what magnesium this is known as what reasons for the diagonal relationship okay so lithium is the first member of the alkali metals it is showing the certain properties okay no, no doubt properties of alkali metals 
but it differs slightly. It shows some similar properties with the diagonal member magnesium because of all these reasons. So with this, we'll wind up uh, what S block elements in that alkali metals. So in the next session, we'll discuss the other block in the S block that is alkaline earth metals. Till then, have a nice time and thank you.